Hi, I'm Austin Chernowski, and I'm going to do an internal analysis on Chipotle Mexican Grill. So Chipotle was founded by Steve Ells back in 1993 in Denver, Colorado. Uh, he ended up uh, wanting to, to start off one, one store with a, a small loan from his dad uh, and, and really use the money from that to start up more of a fine dining location. But the original location did so well. Uh, they ended up expanding to 16 different locations in uh, the surrounding Denver, Colorado area, uh, and and really never looked back after that. Uh, so a few years later, after they kept expanding, McDonald's made uh, an investment that really helped them scale of $360 million uh, and was a pretty major uh, and primary investor for them. Uh, so they, they held on to that up until their uh, 2006 IPO, uh, which was very successful for Chipotle, really strong stock price and performance after that. Uh, and McDonald's at that time ended up uh, divesting and getting $1.5 billion out of it. Uh, although there's some reports that if they'd held on even just another 10 years, that would have grown to $15 billion. Uh, so in 2018, uh, Brian Nickel took over as CEO from Steve Ells, who had been in that role ever since. Uh, and Steve Ells ended up leaving the company in 2020 uh, and, and stepping down from the board as well. Uh, Brian Nichols' salary, as reported back in 2019, was uh, just under $34 million, uh, most of that coming from incentive payments uh, around st strong stocks per stock performance. Uh, so if we look at the different uh, resource types that Chipotle has, um, if we start on the left here with uh, their physical resources, they have just under 3,000 uh, retail locations in the U.S. and nearly every state and uh, in most of the major cities. Uh, they've, they've tried to branch out a bit internationally, but not had anyone near the kind of explosive growth and success that they've experienced in the United States. Uh, they have 24 uh, distribution centers in the United States, which enables them to uh, rapidly source ingredients and keep them fresh uh, direct to the, the stores. Uh, and that also means that any of their suppliers are uh, under or within 250 miles of each uh, of those DCs. Uh, from a human resource perspective, uh, they, they well beat the benchmark uh, with two thirds rating them as a, a great place to work for compared to 57% benchmark. Uh, really strong revenue per employee, uh, uh, 77K. Uh, their turnover rate overall is quite high at uh, 183%, but not abnormal for the uh, kind of food retail business. Uh, and they've done a lot of efforts to reduce that, uh, especially amongst their uh, in-store managers, uh, but mo the lion's share of that number being represented by their hourly staff. From an organizational resource perspective, Perspective, their their brand image is really their main their main asset in that bucket. So, the the whole image of high quality food coming from good places, uh, coming locally, high quality, strong respect to, of animal welfare that they're raising for their meats and proteins, uh, is is really one of the strong resources they have in that bucket. From a financial perspective, uh, it's normal for to see net profit margins of six to nine percent. So. In the past 12 months, they've been on the upper end of that range. And over the past five years, they've averaged on maybe the lower end of that normal range at 6%. They, they are a little unusual having no long-term debt and $1.6 billion in cash reserves, which is, which is quite large. Uh, it's certainly a strong financial resource, but also maybe liability in terms of uh, just making them a target for acquisition potentially in the future. So if we assess, do they have a sustainable competitive advantage? Uh, I put here in green that they have both uh, valuable pro capabilities that products that people are willing to pay for and a rare capability in that uh, they're gaining market share rapidly. Uh, but I gave kind of a low score here in terms of their costly to imitate. It's pretty cheap and there's a lot of competitors that have entered in and stolen a little bit of market share from them. And then from a, a non-substitutable perspective, uh, you know, the fact that their sourcing is such a high quality is great. And we see this kind of rating system here on the right where they're far and away ahead of the vast majority of fast food places. 
but it's really just an investment that those those other companies would need to make to catch up with Chipotle and not something that's sustainable. So overall, I gave them a lower, I, I didn't necessarily rank them as a, having a sustainable competitive advantage, uh, but certainly something that they could keep pushing if they keep innovating as they go ahead. So thanks for the time. And that's uh, my report on Chipotle.